brother, Rob Reed. How you doing, Eric? It's good to be here. Man, I'm doing good. Coming to us from L.A., California, Los Angeles, huh? Yeah, I think you're going to have a bad bio on me, so we could just, like, do it. I'm guessing it's going to be outdated because I've told Red for about two years that I was going to update it. So two, it's going to be two years in a week. But I am in Los Angeles. I am born and raised. I was born in the San Fernando Valley, and I, I'm not sure I'll ever leave unless California prices me out. You never know what could happen. <laughs> Well, I won't go into your, unless you want me to read the bio I have, I will happily do so, but I do. You can read the beginning. Highlight. Yeah, because especially because I think with your last name, we're kind of brothers in a different way, I'm guessing. Yeah, hey, dude, I saw that. Shalom, my brother. Shalom, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cohen, you got Cohen there. So yeah, I have a Jewish background and a friend invited me to, to church some 18 nine, oh man 19 years ago now and i said but i'm jewish and uh he won we met at a homeowner association meeting and we shared a love of music and he happened to play bass at a local church and one day he invited me after we'd recorded some stuff together and i said it's too early i'm jewish i don't believe any of that stuff and so no but he was a person of peace to me and i loved him and I thought, well, for an opportunity to play music again, and I was at the time 36 years old, 35, and I hadn't played in a long time, I thought, okay. And the pastor said it was okay, but he said he can't sing. And it made all sense in the world because the words didn't mean anything to me, and I would mm. be faking it, and I didn't want to do that anyway. I had some integrity pre-Christ, a little bit. He's made me more uh, filled with it, but I'm still, he's, he who began a good work in me is going to finish it, I hope. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, back then I knew that, you know, I didn't want to, I wasn't going to do that. And through the gift of music and through the love of other believers in Christ, shining the light, I, the scales came off my eyes at about 11 months in. And it was interestingly enough in a sermon on Acts 9, where the scales come off Paul's eyes. And as the preacher, my, my teacher, Pastor Dana Hansen's preaching on prison ministry and he just came back and they baptized some prisoners, some young guys who were really needing Jesus. He's crying up there and I'm crying up there. And one of the miraculous things that happened to me was suddenly the building that I was in that I'd been in for 11 months, I swear it felt like it shrunk. Mm. It wasn't that big of a building, but it went from feeling like I mean, it's big enough, though, bigger than my house, from feeling like a, a big place of pews, and suddenly it seemed to close in on me a little bit, and it felt like home. And, and I, I, kicking and screaming, I ended up uh, changing my mind, thinking transcendently, metanoia, thinking higher, repenting, seeing my wickedness, needing a savior, and the rest is history. So 18 years later, I'm writing songs for him and, and having fun in the Lord. Man, that's a an absolute beautiful testimony, and it's a blessing uh, to hear from a brother that's also coming from a Jewish background. Uh, Did you have bar mitzvah? For Jesus. Uh, you... No, actually, so I was split between two families okay. at a very young age and did not get bar mitzvahed in, uh, but went to I'll do school. one for you if you want, you know, we'll ah, get some time later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on, come on through it. Maybe I should come out to the West Coast for it, huh? Sure, <laughs> sure. See, the thing that is interesting about that, though, is that um, I think I read in Deuteronomy, but I really don't know. And I, I, the reason I'm pretty sure I did, because I had to memorize the Torah portion. I had to read from the Torah. And I, I, one of the songs I've written that I'm not playing tonight unless I'm coerced, is Shema Yisrael, Deuteronomy 6.4. Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And I'm almost positive that was in my, so I think I read through Deuteronomy 6. But the fact that I don't know for sure is kind of an indicator of how, unfortunately, in our Hebrew schools, we, we didn't, at least I didn't, spend a lot of time in the Word. It was more about traditions. What about you? Was it traditions with, uh, it was splitting families, though. It was probably mixing up. You didn't know where you were and which way it was up. Yeah, I, I got a taste of everything. I celebrated Christmas and Hanukkah. I celebrated, uh, you know, high holidays in the Jewish tradition with my father when I was there, mm -hmm. uh, such as Passover and things of that nature. And then I'd go back and celebrate Easter or whatever else mm -hmm. on my mom's side. So it was definitely an interesting thing. Sure. Uh, 
on my end. Well, but we'll yeah, talk, man. We'll talk more about that soon, I guess. Maybe I'll host one day and then you'll be an artist. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and so good. I would love it before we go into song number one. Give a shout out to Home Church if you have one. Sure. My church is Calvary Chapel, Malibu. And I'm the, that's what's needed to be updated. I'm the worship leader there with my wife. And uh, that's just where God has led us right now. And really happy with Pastor Brian there. My, my teacher, the, my first pastor that I already talked about, he retired. And after he retired, the, the new mission of the church that I was at sort of went, you know, a little younger. And I get it. I'm an older guy. Uh, and, but Calvary Chapel had a need in Malibu. And, and God uh, showed me the way. So we're enjoying our time there. Amen. And, and what you got cooking in the number one spot, brother? I think uh, th this is a song that kind of has new meaning for me because of uh, I did a Bible in a year reading um, last year. I did it online. And one of the biggest uh, days that I had was, and I think it was a couple days maybe, was reading through Ezekiel 47. And I didn't know about Ezekiel 47 when I first wrote this. This song's called Flood of Grace. Read it and read about the, the flood of grace, that, the living water that comes out of the perfect temple. And as Jesus says, he's the temple, and you tear it down, and he'll raise it up again in three days, and that's exactly what he did. This is a song for the Holy Spirit, and we ask you, Holy Spirit, that you, you come into this place and, and fill us and edify us and, and help us to uh, just bask in the warmth of your love. In Jesus' name. your peace holy spirit gift us with faith that's increased won't you fill this place as we sing your praise and give us your vision pour down your truth so we dream and we flourish with eyes set on you, won't you fill this place with your flood of grace, flood of grace, flood of grace. Oh, 
guitar might have gotten a little out of tune there at the end there. Eric. Sorry. Wow, bro. And so I'm not on social media to read the comments, but I am uh, reading some of the comments in the chat. And uh, Rob's voice is so awesome, Jose Baraja says. And Crystal Craven. Hey, no, nah, bro. Hey, that was awesome. <clears throat> Crystal Craven you. says, dude, love the vocal layering magic. See, that's it. It takes a little mad magic. You know, Crystal, she met me in person. She knows how much help I need. So, Hey, well, <laughs> it sounds like you know the one who helps you the most, bro, and that's beautiful. Amen, it, and, that's, and that's the greatest thing. That's Joel, too. I forgot to mention that. Ezekiel 47 is a thing in my, eye, in my mind about that. Flood. The farther that you go away from perfection, that perfect, perfect temple is Jesus, the deeper the waters of grace go. But the, the fundamentals of that, again, that's the way the Holy Spirit works in our writing. I was, a, I was probably a believer when I wrote that song for six years, maybe. And I, had, I didn't remember Ezekiel 47. I might have gone through. I found myself. The deeper we get in with the Holy Spirit, uh, the more interesting he, he makes the Bible for us. I find that. I said something to my pastor when I was a new believer and I was reading through Isaiah, which right now is one of my favorite books especially from the Jewish background, because it's just replete with Messianic prophecy. And I said to him, I'm trying to read Isaiah, Pastor, and I'm so bored. And he looked at me like I was nuts, because, of course, he has the decades of Holy Spirit, and I was only an infant. And now I think about myself, and I go, how nuts was I to say that about one of the greatest books in the Bible? They're all great, but Isaiah is the thing that points the way to Jesus. You know? Bro. Yeah, it, you're speaking my love language. Isaiah is literally my favorite book in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ooh. 53. I, I, you can find the Trinity in 63. I mean, there's so, there's so much there. And uh, it's, it's the one stumbling by. It's good for us, I think. In fact, I'm being led to do a Bible study on it with my pastor, probably the beginning of next year, where we're just going to focus on each book and probably we're going to look for those Messianic prophecies where the suffering servant may refer to uh, the nation of Israel, which I believe it does at some points, but part of the, of the argument, the rabbinical arguments against what you and I believe as members of the Jewish religion, or at least from foundation, our ancestors, they'll say that the suffering servant of Isaiah 53 is the nation of Israel. It doesn't make sense because the sacrificial lamb of the suffering servant in Isaiah 53 was without spot or blemish he was without defect he was uh perfect he didn't lie he didn't deceive and uh he didn't do wrong and if you read the old testament enough you know the <laughs> nation of israel was not doing right too much so it can't possibly be the nation of israel that can can reconcile back hey, to god you know they they was definitely as dirty as we are now bro oh yeah oh yeah hey, hey. without jesus you know we're hey, no different on. Yeah. Come on, man. You're right, brother. And uh, I just want to thank you again for being on tonight. Thank you for sharing your gifting. And I'm curious what you got in spot for number two. It's a song called Church. Church is where he's here with us. It doesn't have to be made of, of wood, made of stone. And I didn't practice this, so you'll forgive me. We'll give it a shot. seen a million places built to withstand the test of time brilliant pieces people preaching Christian family shining bright and I thought I knew what it's like to worship you, but now I understand church is where you're here with me. Doesn't have to be built of of stone as long as there are two or three we know you're here we're not alone Christians gather 
in the shadows have no building to call their own still they worship risk and danger side and said Father Jesus, it meant Father God Jesus. <laughs> Amen. <That laughs> I, did, I repeated it, so we got the, we got made sure. I think I was right. I don't know. You know, we're working it out. Hey, I love it, bro. It was beautiful, beautiful song. I wrote that. That's a, a fun song because, again, Holy Spirit working. I had some guys in this room with me, two young guys that I've sort of been training up to kind of be worship leaders. They now have a family, so they don't have time for that, but I'm hoping they'll get back to it. But we wrote that song together, and it was two months before COVID. And we didn't know that was gonna happen, and so it became kind of our anthem for the church of, uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's, we have to be in the building. We have to fellowship. Yeah. We have to have in-person fellowship. This is great but it doesn't compare to being in person, to be able to touch and hug and brother and sister, to be able to, uh, to have people who have your back when you mess up and to be there to, to be able to talk to and, and learn from. But it was a good reminder, this song, that it's not, the church is the body, it's the people, it's not the, the buildings and the ornate stuff and all that good stuff, so. Yeah, you timing. know. Amen, bro. And and I wanted to, that's one of the truths of your song that I wanted to point out and mention was that you said that the church doesn't have to be made of wood or stone. And the truth of the matter is that we're the only church that some people may ever meet. We're the only right. Jesus that some people may ever see or know. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are the church, bro. Yeah, and that's a lot of pressure because I fail. I do a lot of online ministry and, you know, there's trolls and things. And sometimes I get uh, a little too much into the concept of trolling the trolls rather than loving the trolls, like uh, this troll should be, wants to be treated kind of or loved. And we need to remember that good old golden rule and, you know, 
Uh, it's, it's a reminder for me, and I thank you for that reminder, because I've been in the midst, I've been better. So when I found that I was getting to, into a little bit of online drama with similar stuff happening over the summer, the Lord impressed upon me, you know what, I want you to read through the New Testament through the end of the mm. year. You're going to do that online like you did the Bible in a year last year, and it has kept me grounded. And I'm more peaceful. I'm intentionally starting my day. I've got people to uh, check in on me. It's sort of like mini church online in the morning before I go to work. And uh, you can't go wrong with God's work. And that's like Jose. I I was going to tell Jose, I was going to go on behalf of Jesus and uh, King David and uh, who else was in there that he was quoting. Uh, We were going to sue him for copyright infringement for his admission (laughs) of plagiarizing. (laughs) <laughs> but, uh, no. that's a good thing they won't they won't and thank God for that because the next psalm I'm going to play for you is from Matthew and it's uh, Matthew 15 21 to 28 it's about the Canaanite woman the Syrophoenician woman who believed on the Lord Jesus who uh, he had to remind her and she sort of knew I'm, I'm here for the for the chosen people, the Jews first, because the Jews know and they're waiting for me. They know the Messiah. And she says, well, Lord, I, I kind of know who you are, even though I know it's not quite my time. And, and even the family dogs are ready to take the crumbs. And I believe that you can heal my daughter who's demon-possessed. And that's exactly what Jesus did. And in the end, the message for that is, what must I do to be saved? Well, believe, believe in your heart that God was raised from the dead, that Jesus was raised from the dead on the third day for the forgiveness of sins. Proclaim that Jesus is Lord. And that's it. And then he who began a good work in you right at that will continue to finish it. And we trust in that as he helps us to endure. This is Take the Crumbs. your greatness is beyond my thoughts a small seed of faith is all I got I am not worthy not of the chosen one I only ask him if I could take the crumbs. Lord, you reply, just believe straight from the ways of the world, and I'll see that your grace affords me no cost that the greatness of your mercy is found in the cross Your greatness is beyond my thoughts. A small seed of faith is all I got. I am not worthy, not of the chosen ones. So I only ask you. I could take the crown, Lord, you buy. Just believe straight from the ways of the world, and I'll see all oh, that your grace. Affords me no cost that the greatness of your mercy is found in the cross.
you save me from my sin an awesome song bro yeah i i absolutely love the sound that god has given you that was uh he gave me he, he blessed me with a this is to show you how to play it with a with a, a cut capo this is like a drop e capo it automatically puts you in like a drop d scenario but in the key of e so it's drop e and i the first time i got it i just picked it up and i put it on i at first i put it on random place i go it's not really sounding any good so i Put on the second one, and I just started going. Uh, just came right away, and I go, oh, that sounds like a song. All right, Lord, what are we doing? And I happened to be reading through Matthew 15, and that just kind of was perfect. So thank yeah. you, God, for that song. I can say you had me rocking out the whole time, bro, in the name of Jesus. Awesome. Awesome. That's a fun song. I, it also stretched me in terms of uh, uh, production. Mm. so that that's uh you can get that song I, I, i'm i think i like that song of all the songs i've ever done that's production wise and everything of everything that reflects me and who i am and my soul it's it's actually in that that song uh, like i listen to that and, I, and there's some little nuances and stuff and go thank you god i don't know how that happened but i know that i was just along for the ride on that one and um it was a blessing to be able to write it but it Amen. starts it starts with as Jose said stuff to plagiarize and you can't do any better than the Bible. <laughs> Come on. Cuz I'll get Amen. sued otherwise. Yeah. Hey. Hey and and that word is meant to go ahead and spread forth, ain't it? That's right. That's right. So uh tell us where can we find more out about your ministry and your music? How can we find you? Well, you see, you can see uh, the Calvary Chapel Malibu is online. You can find it on YouTube. I'm at robreed.com. I don't really update it that much. I, I need to, um, but I'm on Spotify and Apple Music and all your favorite streaming platforms and the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Rob Reed ESQ or Rob Reed Music. And if you go to robreed.com, you can find it. And I'd love for people to join every morning. It's, it kind of varies. I tried to do it between 8.30 a.m. Pacific and uh, 9 o'clock or so, depending on if I have uh, court appearance or something. But uh, I, uh, it's uh, been my grounding, and I'm reading through the New Testament through the end of the year. So please join me. And I'm also looking for artists if you want to do some videos, because I do music on there too to intersperse in between. So if you do a video and you send it to me, I might put it on there as like an interlude. Basically, I do a reading, and then we have a song, and then we, we have a study. So be Amen. fun. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely love the vision and the idea. Uh, what do you got for us in spot three, bro? Uh, this is four, I think. Is this oh. four? Yeah, this is four. I mean, I'll do, but I don't. I, I have to be respectful. Bob's already got his guitar. He's like, Rob, will you shut up already? I can see. Yeah. No, hey. I'm kidding, Bob. I have one more. I'll do uh, the author of my story. And this is uh, also a blessing song. The pastor... Uh, of before he retired a couple years it was the 100th anniversary of our church and he there was a book I don't think I have oh I do it's called the the gospel primer right there and he just says you know the songwriters will appreciate this 
He goes, uh, you could, uh, we're going to do a chapter a week. I'm going to preach and you can write a song a week. I'm like, uh, pastor, it doesn't really work like that. But I tried and I did. And some of the stuff was absolute garbage. And this was one, but a great joyful noise nonetheless. But this one uh, was one that I really liked and it's got some traction and uh, with folks out there that are listening to it and I'm getting emails saying that it edifies them. And essentially the message of this is, Without the God who created all things, I am nothing. But now with the God who created all things, I'm a child of the King. This is called Author of My Story. When I think about my life, and the stories shape me I'd taken all the credit And shifted all the blame Without the God who created all things I am nothing It's not about how I feel Great things I think I've done When I've made it all about me The truth is it's three to none Without the God who created all things I am nothing The reason for my story Is the king of the universe the creator of all things when I tell my story he must be first the author of my story let us fix our eyes on Jesus the author of the perfection stories more about us may the spirit bring correction without the God who created all things we are nothing the author of my story is the king of the universe Creator of all things, when I tell my story, he must be first. The author of my story, he holds the keys to the universe. He created everything, what makes me think I can change the course on my own. I can't change the course The author of my story Without the God Who created all things I am nothing Now with the God Who created all things Child Thank you for having me. Man, what a blessing it's been to get to know you, Brother Rob Reed. Uh, I would ask you the same as I asked Jose. Do you have any uh, final thoughts to leave us with? Any prayer that you want to leave us with? Any prayer requests you may have? Just Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That's And there's no way to the Father through him. And if there's anyone here that's struggling in faith or finances or... Uh, anything in this life and struggling and thinking that God isn't with you then let's let's pray for a moment right now I'm led to do that that Father God we know that you are Jehovah Jireh that you are mm -hmm. and I'm sure Crystal might be singing about that today so it'll be interesting Holy Spirit what you've got in store there that you are our provider and we trust in you everything is yours anyway 
And we thank you for the blessings that you've given us and allowed us to have to use for your glory, God, the guitars, the keys, the capos, the keyboards, the synthesizers, our vocal cords. Help us to not mm -hmm. take those things for granted, God. Not take for granted the fact that we have internet access and there's millions right now that may not even have electricity, Lord. Give those who need comfort, comfort. Remind them that they're, they're blessed. That they're blessed. Those who are hurting, blessed are those. God, you, you are with them every step of the way. Thank you for that hope and promise, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Eric. Amen. Hey, thank you, Brother Rob, for joining us from My pleasure. From Los, Los Angeles. Hey, yes. come the on, man, boy. The messy man cave. <laughs> hey, I was going to ask you, I'll have to reach you offline, because I think those are sports cards in your background. Uh, there are sports cards. These are actually bobbleheads. I have sports cards, I see, man. I see the white boxes over there in the corner, it looks like. Yeah, there are those sports like, cards. Do you yeah, collect? Okay. Oh, I do, boy. bro. I got... I got boxes and boxes and boxes. So I have to talk to you, brother. Thank we you. We will for have being good conversations. Tonight. All right. God bless you.